Hello, Pickles of the Internet, and welcome to this video where today I will be attempting to build a vehicle for the Rally de Grande, uh, Frunia, de Luha to Frunia, rather, championship. And, well, here are our bodies that we can choose from. You know what? This does look quite tempting, actually. <laughs> I don't think I would get anywhere with it, though. And we do have what appears to be the My Summer Car Car. So, that's an option. Although it's 1990, so... I'd say it's, it's looking a bit old by that point. We have these. They are old 70s American cars, but they were still making these up until about 1990, so... Not like they're the most impractical choice. You know what? We could build a limousine. No, it wouldn't keep the weight down enough. The weight has to be uh, under 1,500 pounds, apparently. But, well, I can't. Um, I can't do that. I thought about it, but it just seems impossible. So I'm going to use um, 15... Uh, or 2,500 pounds, since it seems like a more manageable target, and yeah, let's see, we do actually have a Range Rover body, I mean it seems so obvious, but I'm going to try it, I think it can really have some potential, <laughs> um, we want uh, the lightest materials available, so yeah, we're going to go with a fiberglass on a corrosion-resistant ladder. It might not do the very best on markets, but we're building a race truck here. We basically want simple, rugged technology. Or at least I'm building a race truck, and it has to be light as well. So maybe ladder frame will have to go just based on weight, as it did before, I think. Um, push rod. I don't know, maybe I should see 1,500 kilograms and just cheat. <laughs> you know what? I think, I think I will, because otherwise, there's no way you could realistically get a truck into, what, 1,100 kilos. So I'm going to just cheat, I guess, <laughs> and have under 1,500 kilograms. Still, seeing what I could build would be interesting. If it is one of the lighter cars, though, I literally just end up building a car down to the very lowest specifications. Can I have solid axle coil here, front and rear? So they should soak up bumps quite well. And, yeah. See how that is. It's quite good for off-roading, I know that much. Could go with an inline six, but a V6 is much better for balance. Now nah, we want it to be rugged. Um, do overhead cam, aluminium, no VVL. Oh well, might as well go with five alpha cylinder then, <laughs> if that's how it's going to be. So the size is between 3.1 liters and 4.3 liters. This is too big naturally. And even then it's too big. We can get it within the car though. With a smaller engine. Let's try 3.1. See if I can get close to the limit. I am going to absolutely pack the technology onto this thing though. Because otherwise it won't stand much chance. I think I'm blocked from using race technologies, but that should be okay. Do, do, do. Engine cannot make more than 405 horsepower. That is another thing to bear in mind. And uh, billet, titanium, and algae are banned. So we can't use that, but we can use that. And we can use that, but I don't think it's any stronger than Forged. I think it's actually weaker, to be entirely honest. We'll go with variable valve timing. I mean, I don't see why we shouldn't go with it. And anything else? We can't turbo it because of a type of um, exhaust header it gives us. If only. 
it says that the exhaust has to be, oh wait, the headers cannot be short cast, long tubular, or waist tubular. So, yeah, it gives us a short cast if we go with a turbo. It's kind of just, we're instantly given that. And we'll go with the best fuel type that we can. Is it going to say fuel has to be set to premium? Okay, I can deal with that just about. Um, tubular and what else? I don't know uh, what we want here. So I'll just go with a fairly standard setup. And let's see how it goes. It's certainly loud. <laughs> this isn't the biggest engine in the world, remember. It is an inline six. So that's a uh, less cylindered configuration, but it should work. I know the off-road tire compound doesn't have much grip, so as much as the markets may protest it, I'm going with a manual locker, especially since 235s are the mandatory tires, front and rear. I think I want to know what power is going where and when. So 50-50 power distribution, Fully locking differentials, I know that 25% of the power will go to, say, this wheel. So, that should make it easier to handle. I think I can go with some bigger wheels. How about 19s? I mean, it's a rally car. It's not supposed to be a Dakar vehicle, but I'm using a SUV-type body anyway. Um, we can go with alloy, I think. Maybe not magnesium does it say we're going to need as big a brakes as we can possibly get on the front and I don't know on the back put some bigger brakes on there as well how about that the quality will have to go up as well but not right now only when the time is right for that so fully clad do we want that or off-road skid tray fully clad will give it better economy Hmm, even if it's not technically designed for off-road, I think I'm favouring fully clad because it's going to make the car so much more aerodynamic and as a result, yeah, that will give us better economy as I just said before and that better economy will translate into being able to run for longer without having to fill it up. How heavy is this, I'm going to wonder? It's made of fiberglass. I mean, it shouldn't be that ridiculous. It should only need a basic interior besides the odd radio and stuff. We're not going to be building a luxury vehicle here. Variable hydraulic is the requirement, so we'll go with that. I have no idea about the traction assist, so... I don't know. None. <laughs> it's probably the option to go for. If we don't know, um, basic 80 safety, sure. Only the base, only the most basic for our drivers. And we'll go with some pretty decent suspension. Yeah, so if it's 1500 kilograms, you can see how it would get under that. That seems like the point, really. It doesn't seem as realistic to expect the car to come under 1100. It can be done, but, you know, if we're looking at a realistic rally series, what realistic rally series would expect the cars to be 600 kilograms or whatever it is? 1500 kilograms makes sense. I, I would see cars working at that. So, we've got coils all around... I'm thinking I could go with McPherson strut on the front. It would allow it to run lower if it needs to. And it would lighten the front up, which would improve the weight balance. That would be good overall. And 
maybe I should go with a truck body. <laughs> I'm thinking, so what's the engine size limit? 4.3 litres. I'm thinking as well. Wait, I'm not changing the size. I'm changing the compression. <laughs> someone, seriously, someone needs to, someone needs to get me these days and tell me I'm, I'm messing up so bad. Yeah, panic averted. So 4.1 at the moment. We can go up to 4.3 and two and 4.3. Not a minute, not, not a single point above that. Well, I added that part, that's not on the actual specifications, but still, I like to say things. <laughs> um, we have the, we have the height thing here, so yes, it is a little on the tall side, but nothing to worry about, you know, this engine is still fitting in the car easily. I was slightly worried with a transverse mounting of this engine, but mounted longitudinally, no problems at all. Wait a minute. That structural beam is only there with carbon fibre. So is it to do with a particular properties of carbon fibre that that's added to a truck frame to make it stiffer? Either way, I don't know. I'm going with light truck uh, unitary because it was designed for pickup truck. So, hence forth, the technology should be okay for pickup trucks, even if it is a little heavier. So, here I have the 3.3 litre V6. It is actually significantly smaller than before, as you might be able to tell. And I think there's no width problems at all. Yeah, it's just height. Height is the only problem with this engine now, which is interesting. Anyway, it is five valves per cylinder and it has forged internals. I decided to go with heavy duty forged Conrod since it is a high power, high torque engine. And having an engine that can deal with the torque is always important. Now it got smaller because it was easy to make for power. I mean, I could probably push it even smaller if I wanted to, but I don't because I don't want the cam profile to go wide up and kind of mess the power, power band up even more than it already is. It's 404 horsepower at the moment. That's just below the 405 horsepower maximum. I tried, I really did, but as I say, it's too easy to make power. I could try a dual exhaust, but then that might take away some of the weight advantage I've just gained. So I don't want that. Now the weight balance of the car is so much better. Now I've sorted the engine out. It is 403.8 horsepower even to be precise and under 200 kilograms. So yes, quite effective at being a pickup truck engine, I would say. And it's a good longitudinal 4x4 too. So, what else could you want? Wait, what does the market actually think? <laughs> Heavy utility hate it. I've gone far too racy with this engine. It's far too small and high webbing for them. But I don't care. Because you know what? Um, I wasn't targeting them. And well, I was for a very brief point. But just to get things right. <laughs> Six to sixty. 
I don't know. Isn't that an evil number or something? <laughs> so, yeah, we've got a very evil acceleration figure. And what was I looking for? I was looking for... Oh, it can't tow anything, apparently. Where is the downforce? We're making lift on the front. That can't be good. We've got to lower the weird downforce. La 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 Anyway, here is our truck at uh, Tri Mountain. I thought a whole part of the track was missing there, but no, it's just a way to get off into that part of the scenery. Anyway, I'm basically going to call this um, Rally Prototype 1 because my creativity isn't that high today. Um, that's it, really. <laughs> that's the only name I can come up with. But the number plate, yes, I know it's a bit off. In hindsight, I see that as well. But I'm going to give this vehicle a try, see how it does. Let's also try these indicators, because they are really goofy. Yeah, they do actually work, and they work incredibly well. That's a pleasant surprise. How about the front ones? Yeah, I did a surprisingly good job of indicators. Congratulations past me for that. So, we're going to start. Okay, so minor problems averted with the pedals and... Uh, likely my cable in the future if I didn't fix it. I can give this another try. I mean, there's no point hiding it. There was another set of tyre tracks there. And I, I basically crashed on the second corner. That's not good enough. Oh dear. It does handle okay though. I can feel there's a surprising amount of grip. The last attempt I had at building a car. Why do you crash now? I have messed up so badly. Why have I done this? Anyway, I'm, I'm going to try. I'm, I think it's in well enough condition, even if some bits of it are bent up. I have to be careful though. These brakes are not as good as I remember the other vehicle having. The other vehicle was lighter, but it sure had better brakes. Hard to see how these would be good enough for hyper category. I mean, I did have ABS before, but I decided not to go with any assists because it said nothing. So, you know, I decided that was probably the more realistic option this time. Oh. Slow it down, slow it down. Touch on the uh, pedal. Gently does it, gently does it round here. I mean, this this has an excuse for being sloppy, at least. It's a pickup truck. The other vehicle was sliding and understeering at the wrong places, but that was a sportier car, so, you know, you didn't expect it in the same way you expect it from this. I will admit, I'm surprised how good the leaf springs are. Come on. If this is, as I remember it, it should have hydropneumatic suspension. That may be helping a little. Come on, try and get it round the corner. And... Yep. Yeah. Cash files from older games are interrupting my gameplay. How couldn't I have noticed that earlier? I don't know. It's a bit too late now, though, to... Just get rid of that message, um... On the earlier part of the video. I'll have to make do as it is. Slow. Slow. Corner. Oof. They were some pretty big oofs at that. And slow it. Round here we go. There we are. Think slowing it again is a good idea. I'm getting the hang of this truck. And I get the feeling it can be quick. Whoa! That was craziness. And that was turning 100% to the Y as well. That crashed me into that wall there. So I don't know. I mean, I was expecting some kind of comeback, but nothing. Something is badly messed up on this. How is it still driving? Oh. I don't know. I'm not going to say that the best lap time like that. I might as well give up here. 
Oh well. <laughs> it got a 224. It's just with the wheel like that, it won't put the power down and it won't go quick. So I'm going to use 224 as the time. Let's see how that does. So, we are below <laughs> the TAIF 005 and that was a pretty powerful muscle car. However, we have come above the turkey on the run. So, you know, it's the fine tuning of it. I mean, it has a lot of power. And if you can put that power to use, I'm sure you could get something out of it. What, floating uh, bushes? Ooh. I'm sure you could get something out of it. But, you, you know, I couldn't because I'm not a great driver. And as you saw, the kind of slide that put me out, I was 100% locked to the white, and the vehicle just wasn't going to balance itself out, not even in the slightest, that's ultimately what killed this wheel here. Um, can we put the indicators on? Yes. That light amazingly still works, you wouldn't think so. The wheel is intact, because that didn't take the hit. Um, can we hinder a wear wheel to make it look like I'm a better driver than I am. There we go, I couldn't drive that, could I? Yeah. And that's what I meant about the leaf springs being rugged, but it just lacks a fine tuning of a child eating donut, <laughs> which did far, far better. That came just below the Moamar V8 automatic, so that is a significantly better vehicle. But this is a truck, and Maybe off-road the situation would be different, but from what I've experienced, it's not a particularly great car to drive. Anyway, we're all being said and done. I'm going to leave it here for today, and I'll say goodbye until another day.